Hey there, thanks for downloading, listening to, uh, or and or watching the Lean Into Art Cast, the show where a couple of visual storytellers get together and take a uh, hard look at different topics that pop up in and around communicating visually. We think hard about this stuff, so you will too. My name is Jersey Drozd. I am a cartoonist and teaching artist, and you can find out more about me at jdrozd.com, D-R-O-Z-D. Uh, the other host is... Oh, that's awesome. I, I need to check out this jdrozd.com. Uh, and this, the, the person that needs to do this is, uh, yeah, hi, I'm Rob Stenzinger. I'm a uh, user experience designer and game designer. Uh, you can find out about a bunch of stuff that I do at robstenzinger.com. You got robstenzinger.com? Yeah, I know. I, I, it's, it's, it turns out that I'm not battling a bass player who has my same name and who is internet savvy. <laughs> So I have it easy. <laughs> There's always a race player. <laughs> God help me in Jersey Droz if we ever see each other across the street in the dark night. <laughs> you. It'll be yeah. It'll be one of those. Yeah. Uh, yeah because I I got the Twitter handle at Jersey, um, but he got JerseyDroz.com. Um, so yeah, we we we. Uh, we, we communicate with visuals, and this is a show where we spend an hour or so thinking really hard about different things that pop up from time to time uh, when you are making things that communicate visually, whether it's software, whether it's illustration, artwork, or in this case, we're coming back to one of my favorite topics. We're coming back to mini comics, but specifically this thing called impositioning, right? Yeah, I mean, the, this whole... Okay, you, you, you get your comic designed and you know, written and what have you. Um, I assume you have a, a need to reproduce it. And we, aren't, we typically aren't reproducing things with, with a, um, a copy machine, right? Or a copier, or a Xerox machine, what have you. Uh, because that would hide this issue of imposition. Um, probably. Would it? Probably. I remember having to learn this like very early on, like in like 1994, when I made my first, what we called back then an ash can. What's funny, uh, I don't, I, you know what? I could be totally wrong with that. And I- th Well, only because, well, I, I can just, I can do a quick visual aid to describe what we're talking about. So like if in the case of, here's one of my mini comics that you can get at tinyastronaut.com. Hmm. Um, it's, if you want to saddle stitch like this, where, what does that mean? That means that there's staples along the spine Mm -hmm. Right. In other words, you're printing the pages on a bigger sheet of paper than each individual page. And the moment you do that and you create a fold and you nest pages together, you, you by necessity have to put them out of order. Um, if, and, and what's more is to more efficiently, you know, uh, print the pages on paper. So as not to waste paper, you gang up the pages on, bigger piece of paper and then cut them down to size. So this is a, a letter sized sheet of paper and there's four comics pages on this that I cut down the middle and then I can nest them, staple them and fold them, right? But that means that you're going to have to put the pages not only out of order, um, but in a really a really odd order. And it has to be, in, when you're printing on paper, it has to be increments four. I feel like I'm getting into the topic already. So maybe we should just hit the, hit the button, play the music to transfer over to mm -hmm. on the ground. In. Yeah. All right. Well, here we go. Um. I'll do it every time. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah. How did this? How did this come up? I mean, are, are you are are you indeed finishing a new mini comic, Rob? <clears throat> I am. Yes, I am. Uh, there, it, yeah, this is uh, a mini comic I've been working on called uh, Two Pizza Team in a situation called No Trash Talk. That's the cover. <laughs> and, oh, you want to hold that up again? I, I, oh, I made sure. a noise that it, like, the camera switched to me. Okay. There we go. <laughs> so, New yeah, pizza team. Here they are. Yep. Just okay. a little, um, um, it's, it's essentially an, a little eight page mini, but, um, but done essentially where each paid, each pay, it's, so you have eight and a half by 11 paper, which is letter size in the US, which is close to um, uh, A4 international paper, right? Size. Mm -hmm not quite the same size, but um, essentially that size folded in half and that comprises a page. And anytime you run into this situation where you want the end result physical pages to be uh, consuming, you know, a position on a larger printout page, right? 
then you deal with this imposition thing. I didn't know what that name was. Mm. And as, as we were talking about this topic and researching it and stuff uh, a little bit, I, I just, I have a, 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 a bigger appreciation for um, people who are experts in pre-press, right? Because, I mean, they must be thinking, oh, haha, this is trivial. There's, you're just getting two comic pages per physical printout page. Well, then double-sided, that's four, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas they are dealing with large sheets of paper and, and doing like a way more complicated versions of um, this algorithm that I, that I kind of stumbled into because I wanted to be able to, to do this uh, thoughtfully ahead of time. And not that it's, it's, I mean, printing a dummy version and then writing the numbers on the pages and then decomposing like, oh, this is where stuff would go in my digital file, right? Mm -hmm. Because um, as we we're talking about earlier, this is a hybrid process, part physical, part digital, end product being physical. And, um, and if you get into a situation where, well, okay, you're, you're, you have your software of choice where you're laying out pages, uh, suddenly you need to be planful about where they end up. And like, where, how do you, how do you put this, this out of order thing you described, Jersey, uh, where, how does that go? Right. Um, and you mentioned like do printing up a dummy. How does that work? Yeah. Usually like when I'm doing mini comics, little tiny books, um, you know, eight pages to 24 pages, I'll actually take some just, eight, uh, letter size paper, cut it in half, nest the pages, fold them, and then number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on. Mm -hmm. And then it, like you said, decompose them and then I'll reassemble them. Um, but I also have, and I'll do a screen share to share what I have. I, I've made over the years, I've made some templates that I use now. Oh, um, nice. so, so this is an eight page mini comic template that I'll, I'll use to just uh, do the actual impositioning digitally, right? So if we look at this, we see this is uh, again, a letter size sheet of paper. And actually I can, I can mark this up by using that funny uh, Microsoft, uh, Microsoft inks the software stuff. Hmm. So, right. So like we've got our letter size sheet of paper and we can see that I've got page one marked out, but what right next to it is page eight. Right. Um, and if we switch to the next, the second side of the sheet, there's page two and there's page seven. So if, in other words, if I flip this page over on the opposite side and I'll change my ink color to blue now on the opposite side of this page is page one and on the opposite side of this page is page eight. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and then I see how one set of pages remains oriented up right side up and the other set of pages ends up oriented upside down you know, yeah it doesn't have to be i mean i could just as easily uh flip these around as long as they're flipped around on both sides so that four is on the opposite side of three right um and six is on the opposite side of five uh and then it looks like this when i'm done so here's the pag pagination file or the impositioning file for pickles and taft adventures for hire right so, yeah. and then I just send this digitally to, uh, to the copy shop and then they cut it right down the horizontal middle for me and then I assemble them at home. Um, and I do the actual like, you know, collating and stapling of the file when I'm done. So, yeah, that makes sense as far as, um, so you, you took your, the pattern that you figured out um, with, your, with your physical prototype, right? The, the dummy copy you described and then uh, you know put that pattern into a digital template which is handy but then you have eight pages but then what if so what if this now you want uh, 12 pages uh, 16, 32 pages whatever 30 yeah, yeah. okay yeah <clears throat> so now what? what what do I do then Rob well um, <laughs> you can just make a larger prototype um, but then I think you probably would be able to also use the, these algorithms that we can we can try to describe on the show, where you can um, you can what in whatever increments of, of four pages go ahead and plan out um, uh, what uh, plan the imposition 
in your digital file as far, as far as mapping out, oh, page one goes here, page two, page three, whatever, all the way up to as many as you want without having to have the premeditated um, pattern prototype, the pattern like you did, the template like you described. Mm -hmm. So do you want to hear the algorithm? Or I we... do. I want to hear okay. this algorithm that you, that you were playing around with. <clears throat> okay. Let's see. Uh, I think I'm, I'll try to describe it with uh, some visual aid and yeah. also, and some narrative here. I'll go ahead and share my screen or my a window here, screen share and doodly do. I'll share the sketch app window. Um, <laughs> what's funny? Oops. I, I need to give some permissions to, uh, to the Google talk plugin to allow it to control my computer. All right. Oh, that's Hold funny because I'm actually seeing the, the diagram up on the screen already. Nice. Okay. Progress. But then, all right, then I just said, okay, go ahead and allow this. So you're seeing the diagram. Mm -hmm. You're seeing my arrow and stuff. Mm. It's moving. I zoomed in. I'm seeing the screen move. I'm not necessarily, I don't think I'm seeing your arrow. You're not seeing my arrow. Okay. Oh, yeah, I can sort of see your cursor. It's, it's very small, but yes, it's there. So let's say, okay, there's two flavors of this algorithm. And, and one flavor is, let's say you have the, just like I described for two pizza team, which is um, you have for a physical page, front and back, four comic pages. So half of a physical page equals one comic page. So there's one, there's a flavor of the algorithm for that. And then there's another one for what you showed as far as pickles and taff, where you're getting eight pages per physical page, right? Eight pages per, per physical piece of paper, just to for be like super clear. Physical piece of paper. There you go. Thanks. All right. So going over here, so let's say we wanted to make a 16 page comic with two um, per side of physical piece of paper um, a comic page or two, two comic pages per side. So then here's, here's this, this little sketch, right? Where, um, there's going, so there's going to be four pages printed out with, um, the, the comic, uh, all right. So, oh gosh, I stumble on these terms cause comic page, comic piece of paper, black back. Yeah. And let's, forth, so so the, let's call the piece of paper, the thing that is printed upon and let's call the comic page what the final cut artifact will be. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Like, so the, comic the, page the, is the, the, the unit, the unit of storytelling is the comic page. The piece of paper is the larger unit, which okay. from which the smaller uh, units are de derived. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. We'll, we'll give this a shot. So it's okay. not too crazy um, complicated once, once you, once we get going here. So, so imagine this as two columns where you're planning out your pages where, um, your, so your comic pages and the pieces of paper. So on, on, um, on, you have a left column and, and uh, a left and a right column. And then uh, the, the map that you, as far as your pages and, and where, the, where they would go. And then you have, you have your total list of pages, which is 16. Divide that into two. So you have the, the front half of your book and the left half of your book. And I think of these lists, the front half or the front half and the last half of your book as lists that you're draining. It's almost like you're pulling, you're, you're creating a, a deck of cards that you're pulling one off the stack to fill these positions. The positions are the left column and right column. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the physical pages. So the physical pieces of paper. So, uh, and then each side. So this first box that we're looking at, this is one piece of paper. Um, the first dark rectangle is the front half of the piece of paper. The second rectangle is the second half of the piece of paper, right? Last half. Yeah. Last, the last half. Okay. L as, as marked by columns, L and F and it, Rob, is there any chance we can get this, uh, screen cap or rather this, this, uh, sketch for the show notes so that oh, totally. folks who are listening yeah. to the audio can call it up. We'll yeah. certainly put the sketch in the show notes. Um, okay. So Matt, so you've got your, you've got your list of pages ready to receive your, you know, your, your mapped plan and they mm -hmm. they have two columns and then two rows, right? So essentially you have a grid of four representing each, uh, physical page, physical, physical piece of paper. 
Okay. And now in the right column, you count, you count in a certain way. And then the left column, you count in a certain way. Okay. So you're so counting we, up on the we, front half of the paper. Yep. And you're counting backwards on the, backwards on the last the half left, of the paper. Last half. There you go. That's the trick. That's the algorithm. Okay. You lay things out physically based on how many pages you want to, to, to plan out. And then as you're planning them and mapping, you are draining the list of, or the stack of, you know, numbers where you're going forward on the right side and you're going backward on the left side. So think about if I have to fill this square, okay? First square for the first page, it is, mm -hmm. um, I, I'm, I'm going uh, first, first item in this list. And then that's no longer available, check it off. If I can go to the, to the next box, then it's the, and it's the first item in the list. So the algorithm is um, for this, for the uh, front half, columns are first 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 so you just boop 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 draining that list straightforward it's uh, um, right and so like so be, since you divided the book in half and you have a front mm -hmm. half and a last half yep. and if it's 16 pages then it doesn't take a lot of uh imagination to understand that okay well the first half is gonna have eight pages the second or the last half is gonna have another eight pages mm -hmm. so if i'm draining for the front first half i know i'm going pages one through eight and it means if I'm going down the list, I'm just typing or writing in the right hand box, mm -hmm. the right hand side of each piece of paper, yep. number one, number two, number three, one, number two. four, number yep. five, number six, and so on. But then we move to the last half and we start counting down from 16 to nine. Correct. You're just counting in the opposite direction. And what that creates then is the, the correct arrangement of your comic pages onto the physical piece of paper front side and back side okay. you also have in the I, I just want to point out for the folks who uh check out the link to this sketch that you've done you also have each piece of paper marked as side one and side two side one so, side two yep so one could easily misunderstand this the sketch the sketch as oh well that first box represents a complete piece of paper and there's four pages on it well that's true but the top half is side one the bottom half is side two Correct. Because we're printing on on both sides of the paper. Let me grab this little rectangle over here so I, to emphasize where is that rectangle, friend. So I move this up here, and I'll zoom back in. All right. So the, I put a, I put a dark rectangle around. This is to, to, yes to emphasize exactly what you just said. This represents one uh, piece of paper, both sides, side one, side two. Right. Yep. And same and so forth. So we know we're going to fill four pieces of paper with 16 comic pages. So, and this is the easy version of the algorithm. So again, the, the, the order for the front half column is just first available, first available, first of it, just drain that list, right? The order for the second half the, of your, of your pages, right? First half the pages, second half the pages. Now you go from the, the uh, last page backwards. So you 16, 15, etc. Okay. So that, what i don't know uh what do you think did we, did we cover that one and should we go i think the... so i think so and i mean this it might be tricky for people to understand it just in audio and again i'll, I'll point people at uh, patreon.com slash lean into art or lean lean into art.com do a search for episode 231 and you will find this link in the show notes you can look at the the visual aid uh i think it will make absolute perfect sense once you see that if you are at all confused but i think that was pretty clear okay. so now you're talking about the second algorithm is for printing four comics pages per side of each piece of paper, resulting in eight comics pages per sheet of paper. Which then reduces the amount of pieces of paper we use to print the same amount of comic pages to two, right? Mm -hmm. So here we have two pieces of physical paper that we're going to map out 16 pages to. And the algorithm okay. is, is a little bit more funky but it's an easy, but it's an easy knowable pattern. That was the thing that haunted me about this, where I, it was so unintuitive and I would, I would do my layouts and it would be incorrect. And it, cause of my print tests and little by mm -hmm. little, I would, I would fix my, my, um, it, like if I used, um, illustrator to, to, to lay out my, my print, right. To do my, uh, my preprint or, you know, pre-press layout stuff, right. Wherever I did it, I still would get confused, whatever. And I was haunted by it. I was like, Darn it, this is a knowable pattern. And 
and it was especially the the four four comic pages per side of paper when you're like okay i'm gonna make a mini comic in this form i'm very familiar with where it's like hey it's like a piece of paper folded in half twice yeah how hard can that be but i found it very confusing and um all right you ready for me to take a swing at describing the yeah this, uh, let's do it. okay all right here we go again same as the other t- other approach where you, you 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 take your 16 pages and you divide it into a first half list and a second half list right so we have our first half list and second last first list. first half of what the final book will be yep if so it's i have 16 pages, pages yep eight first eight pages, pages yep. last eight pages exactly um okay so now i know so the we have this this dark gray rectangle that represents this is going to be one uh uh physical piece of paper and then we have the blue squares that show um four there's a grid of four per side right so this is one side of paper this is another the the back the front side of the piece the physical page back side of the physical piece of paper Oy. anyway <laughs> um then okay now how do we drain it how do we drain those lists this is the algorithm right so okay. for the front half the the for the first half column which is going to be the right column again as far as how i chose to lay this out right so you go first last last first first last last first what (laughs) (laughs) it's mad it's not that mad it's just but this this creates the same exact plant pattern that you have in your pickles and taft okay you map this yeah so oh i see so first okay we're draining from both sides we have to drain so, from both sides of the right of the correct half of list of pages that's <laughs> okay so in other words if i go on the right hand column mm-hmm. of both sides of the sheet of paper uh-huh. i'm going to choose it's first no first last last, last, last first. first in other words i go number one that's the first yep. number one last is the, the number eight which is the last number but now check. eight is gone check it off so the next yep. last is number seven one eight seven what's the next first number two one Correct. eight seven two first last last first, first got it last, last first yep aha uh-huh. now and you is there a different pattern on the second side though there's a different pattern for the second for the for the other for the other column it goes oh, last goofy. first first last last first first last right so you that start makes with sense. 16. yep yeah 16 which is the first last now you go to the first first which is the number nine in the nine, second half of the yep. book second first now that nine is checked ten. off yeah go to 10 and then the second last would be 15. wow and this lets you get the correct pages on the page turns and all that kind of stuff right and and then you know you you, you slice it across the middle and you stack your pages and then boom you've got a, a book correctly correctly um using the imposition plan to to print to to print many comic pages on one piece of paper (laughs) uh robert clemens is in the chat and is expressing dismay at us talking about math (laughs) (laughs) well i you know i would argue this is this is logic not math Mm. But nice. it's, it's there. It's dangerously close. Whatever. I don't know. Math is cool. Like we do a lot of cool <laughs> stuff with math. Um, right. Right. Our big things is that we we know that the our total amount of pages, and then we divided that in half as far as like the first half and the second half of pages. Now we're then we're just following a pattern, to, um, you know, almost like a project plan series of steps. Right. They're dance steps. It's you know a pattern. Now, have you tried this with? greater numbers of pages like could you do 64 pages eight pages per sheet of paper this same that algorithm would work all the way down could right? so no? hold on where bro where it's, could i do 64 pages i'm nodding yes yes but then you said eight pages per piece of paper and then i'm like eh, nope that breaks the algorithm i have to i don't know the algorithm f- to that to generate more like what's the correct way to increase the pages per per physical piece of paper that i don't know but i know that you can have a like based on multiples of four, oops, based on multiples of four. Well, that's what I meant. I meant like eight total pages per sheet of paper using both sides. So like this, the second algorithm we're talking gotcha. about. Yes. Okay. The, Sorry. Yes. You can go to 64. 
Um, okay. Yes. But if you wanted to just add to like be- 12 pages per sheet of paper, 16 pages per sheet of paper, that's where the algorithm breaks. Okay. I, so we, we've, we, have, we have for us and our listeners here, uh, two algorithms that work for whether you have two, two comic pages per side or four comic pages per side, two sides of a piece of paper, you know, doubling that number. And then your limitations run in with regard to page count only in that you have to start calculating by increments of four or eight respectively, respective to the algorithms described, right? Yes. Because you, every sheet of paper either has to have four complete pages on it or eight complete pages on it, which, um, becomes kind of a a pain in the tucka sometimes because like, uh, the Captain Cat mini comic that I made years ago with Ann, um, is eight, it's 12 pages, but it's based on an eight page per sheet of paper setup. How'd you hack that one? Cause I've run so, into this too before. So what we did was in order to keep our print costs down, um, is we print the first sheet using the eight page algorithm, like you described. Um, and then the second sheet was, uh, the four page algorithm just repeated. So in other words, let me put it this way, pages one, two, and 11 and 12 are printed twice per sheet of paper. So we only have to print half as many of those pages. Well, the rest, the rest of the interior pages, the middle eight pages are printed twice as much. Does that make sense? And so in the case like, of this comic, are you describing those, those pages, they were the cover and inner cover and back and inner back, or were they actually part of the content of the comic? They were part of the content of the book. So like when okay. you open up the Captain Cat mini comic, there's actually like a glossary page and then like a copyright and like a references page inside of the, the book, which is not part of the the story, but it's actually a printed interior page separate from the cover. Because the cover is printed on a totally different stock. So then, and, and that's exactly what, uh, that's a great way to hack the system. Um, one of them could be, you you plan out um, 16 content pages, and then you're like, well, wait a minute, I have no room for a cover, an inner cover or whatever. Then you end up doing a second um, portion of your print and then um, grouping that into your like your final PDF or what have you, and um, ho- however you're, you're fulfilling it. Where, or maybe you're doing um, a so like a separate card stock cover right so mm-hmm. like so two pizza team is laid out as um let's see how, how many pages this end? it ended up as 12 pages right so it's three um three physical pieces of paper um the one of those pieces of paper is planned on being a card stock cover with a with an outer cover inner cover um, back, back cover and inner back, right? But then the content of the story is, um, you know, the other two physical pages, which equals mm. eight comic pages. Right. Okay. Okay. I lied. There's math. All right. <laughs> I totally. You got me. <laughs> and then the tenth time describing that, I'm like, okay, fine. <laughs> you know, it, this is a conversation I have with my students every year in comics class is that I start talking about these different considerations. And, and actually, we do work with a mini comic template. Um, we do the one that you can find at minicomics.com where all the art is printed on one side of the paper and you fold it in such a way and then you just make one cut and then you collapse it into a mini comic. Do you know what I'm talking about? I That's so cool. Yes. Uh, I love I that pattern. And it was like wizardry to see it. Yeah, um, I don't know if I, I don't have a copy. We did a, a, an episode not long ago about mini comics, and I think that we used that example in there. Yes. I, I'll link to it in the show notes as well. Um, and so once I was walking through this with the kids, you know, invariably they're like, "What math?" No, we we signed up for an art class, and I'm like, "Well, geometry." You know, uh, thinking about page count, uh, and maybe this is where I can do a tease for the next half of the show, where like even thinking about. Um, where different beats of your story are going to fall in terms of, is it going to be a facing page? Is it going to be an even numbered page? Cause that makes a difference in terms of like, now it has the context of the odd numbered page looking at it. Whereas if you end a scene on the odd numbered page that invites a page turn, um, and books naturally open to a certain page, 
So what are you going to have happen there, right? The moment you start thinking about like this impositioning and thinking about how like this, the pages are uh, behave in relation to one another, a whole new avenue of storytelling reveals itself to you, right? So yes, mm -hmm. math, but also math that unlocks cool comic storytelling mojo. Um, and, <laughs> And we can talk about that in a second. Um, I, I do want to say, I want to acknowledge the fact that probably a lot of people listening are probably saying, um, yes, Maga Studio or Clip Studio Paint, the EX, I think is the fancy version, um, has a pagination system built into it. InDesign does this kind of thing. Even Microsoft Word has a booklet export function. So you can like, it'll do a little bit of this impositioning for you. Um, I think Acrobat does it too. Um, but... You know, it's good to know that in a pinch, you can sit down and just do a couple little quick sketches on a piece of paper and work out, you know, <laughs> it, was, it reminded me a lot of like, like speed cubing, the Rubik's Cube speed cubing algorithms, right? Left, oh, left, funny. right, right, that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> it's, okay, sure. Yep, because yeah, in this case, okay, four per page. What is what is in the in the in the front half? It's, it's, it's first, last, last, first. In the, in the second half column, it's last, first, first, last. Uh, see and another t-shirt is born <laughs> <laughs> i get into that all right <laughs> i could totally do you just the the grid of boxes then l f f l uh, yeah l f f l and f l l f yes and then just put <laughs> and then just put remember across the top ah <laughs> uh, okay that we need to do that i think all right, we'll see though, if we can right? print them up before A2CAF, where people can also get a uh, two-pizza team. Um, I, I, I haven't been making enough noise about that. Two-pizza team or and uh, A2CAF.com, uh, the Ann Arbor Comic well, It's Arts not Festival. the only mini-comic that's debuting there, from what I understand, right? Josh, shut your mouth. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> in, in, uh, so are you ready to take a break and then jump into the second half of the discussion? Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Perfect. All right. Uh, in a minute and a half, we are going to talk about different storytelling affordances that come out of thinking about this whole uh, impositioning thing and maybe a little bit more about like the whys of this kind of stuff. Um, maybe a few surprises. We'll see when we get there. Before we get there, though, we have to thank some people who make this show possible. And those people happen to be the folks who support us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash lean into art is the site where you can find it uh what is it it's a way for you to give us a monthly upvote it's for you to say hey i believe in you guys i believe in what you do and the way you think about things uh we want it to continue here's a dollar a month we can pledge as little as a dollar a month we want to thank five people who've been doing just that first up owen jolens longtime supporter of the show and you can find owen a professional comic colorist at comic colorist uh two c's in the middle there uh, really great thinker, too. I mean, I just love the way he processes ideas. Uh, Bouncy McFluff Fluff. Thank you, Bouncy McFluff Fluff, for supporting the show. And as Rob said last time, if we have supporters called Bouncy McFluff Fluff, we are doing something right. Also, Shane W. Smith. You can find Shane on Twitter at Shane underscore W underscore Smith. Thank you, Shane. And thank you once again to the mysterious K. We don't know who you are, but we appreciate the fact that you believe in us and what we do. And finally, thank you to Merjam. And you can find Merjam on Twitter at M-Y-R-J-A-M-V-D-V. And if you want to join them, you can go to patreon.com slash lean into art where you'll find all the shows we produce, as well as the extra leans, the shows we record just for leaners. And uh, it's just Rob and me riffing for a little while. And then that post becomes an open mic where you can talk about whatever you want in a safe place where only other leaners hang out. And we thank everybody who's been doing just that. Patreon.com slash lean into art. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It really means a lot to us. All right, when am I going to play for our bridge to our next section? Um, how about something mysterious? Maybe? There we go. All right. <laughs> Trouble's looking. <laughs> so, um, what do you want to talk about next? Uh, well, okay. So, you, you, have a, you have a setup to, um, you know, think about that sort of extra... That, that extra flavor storytelling kung fu I'm you know I, I you know how can you take advantage of, of the medium in certain ways I'd be happy to tease that way all the way till the end okay <laughs> so <you know. laughs> 
<laughs> punch just, that piece you, down the road. You put your hand on it, and then you just went like this, slid it to the side, yeah. and looked us right in the eye and smiled. We'll talk yeah. about that in a minute, son. Uh, first, exactly. what, 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 what's next on the list? Well, um, there's this. There, so, imposition has, I think, a. a this is a another thing that that's that's been part of why I get confused when I'm laying out my mini comics, and uh, it's this thing that well it all looks great as a PDF, you know, this this should be, um, this should print fine as is what I would assume, but then of course, uh, things get weird, things are rotated upside down or whatever when I actually do the the, the my printing. And, and sometimes it's different when I print at home than when I go to a copy place. Ah, yes. So I'm like, hey, I fixed all the problems. I'm, you know, got it all figured out at home. Then I go to the copy place and, you know, nope, it was the opposite or what have you as far as rotating of pages. Rotating. Oh, is this what you're talking about? Let me. So this happens to me when I go to the cop, copy shop sometimes. So I submit the job like this where mm -hmm. this is the eight and a half by 11 the letter size sheet of paper uncut, mm -hmm. right? So that's one side and that's the other side. So in other words, if we turn it sideways, we look at this page, here's the bottom of this page. When we flip it over, the bottom is there too on the other side. Right. But they'll sometimes, it'll be this way on one side and that way flipped over on the other side. Like the page will actually get rotated the other way around and when they cut it. to read. <laughs> no, because now page one is this orientation and now on the other side is page five upside down mm -hmm. um and so then the printer the copy shop will say well did you s submit the job as head to head or toe or was it toe to toe or side to side flipping of the double-sided paper is that what you're talking about or are you talking about something it else? it is and this is where i need to dig in to understand more terminology and and like i want to know how do i detect or predict this Right. Mm -hmm. So what I've what I've ended up stumbling on is 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 getting how to fix the problem when I discover it. So I just make it cheap to discover the problem. I print one, right, mm -hmm. and and then say and and go see how it went. Uh, and it seems like the common approach is there's a logic to how the ro this rotation happens, and it's part of um, uh, I think they call it when a printer is double sided uh, capable, it's duplexing. And then there's this whole aspect ratio thing of, of like, well, there's, there's almost like a, a priority assumption about like, if you're printing in portrait mode, it's like where the page is tall. It's like, almost like that's the expectation of, um, you know, that's how you, you would print out a book. Like, you know, page, page one is on this side, page two is on that side, page three is on one side, page four is, on, and they just, they, they flip horizontally or no vertically. Right. And it's that expectation as far as the flip. And so brr, turn on, turn that page portrait. And now there's this expectation. landscape, landscape, sorry. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> landscape, landscape. And then the expectation of the flip still remains. How would it be in portrait? Which means, um, I'm not sure about that toe and other stuff terminology, but like, is it, is it, is it, um, doing the flip along the long side of the page or the narrow side of the page? Right. <laughs> And so, oh, this is such a pain point. Yeah, <sighs> yeah, because this is one where I've I've ordered like upwards of like 150 mini comics, you know, from like the FedEx store down the street, and sometimes I'll get there and they'll be like, oh, what? Yeah, that happens sometimes. The computer doesn't register the the flip correctly. We'll just reprint them. Other times they're like, well, did you submit the job right? And I'll be like. I thought I did. <laughs> like, what's right? I don't speak printer, and how do I? Right? Am I able to modem into your printer and, and ask it, "Hey, printer, what's your preferences? Do you like to flip things this way or that?" And that'd be neat. Um, but uh, it seems I don't know. And I guess you end up probably getting to know the printers that you end up using, and you find the pattern that you should follow most prominently or what right but like mm -hmm. i would recommend doing you know trying trying to have enough time in your schedule for your deadline to do it a test print with time to to fix it if it's wrong uh, whatever you assumed 
Yeah, and actually, now that I think about it, the jobs wherever, whenever I've had that happen to me is usually when I print it landscape. Like, so in the case of this fish, some fish don't have teeth comic, right? This uh -huh. is the orientation of, it's it's a yep. landscape orientation cut. Um, but then whereas, how it gets flipped, turn the page back to um, por uh, portrait, and it probably got flipped in that way. Right, yeah, I got flipped this way. That's my Which, hypothesis. I don't know if this is the, how the numbers pan out as far as most printers have this bias, but like this is what mm. I've, I've been running into just as I've been thinking about it this time. Mm. Um, but, okay, I, I can share a visual example too. Um, okay, please all do. Right. All right, so do, 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 share in my screen. And we're going to go back to the same. All right, so, all right, am I back? Yeah, I see you. All right. So here we go. This is how I started. Oops, not ready for duplexing. So this is, you know, physical, physical page one, front and back. So here we see um, draining the list forward, draining the list backward, right? So um, page one, page two, uh, page uh, 12, page 11, in my case. Um, so, and again, notice like three physical pages, pieces of paper, front and back. All right. So when I printed it this way, now I kind of switched back to my camera um, to get this effect. Um, here's what happened. Um, okay. Hi, page one, doodly do. Oh, page two pieces are upside down. And oh, hey, page, <laughs> you know, page three. Hey, we're, oh, we're fine. Phew. Oh, page four. Oh, you let me down. You're upside down. Come on. And, is that uh, actually page four or is that page six? Because like if it flipped it around that way, right. it yeah, might no, even be. Right. So, yes. Uh, doo -doo. No, it was. It is the correct. Well, hey, the algorithm didn't let me down, right? It wasn't. It, so what it was is it's in the correct physical position, but the not the correct uh, orientation. Gotcha. <laughs> Screwed up. It's yeah. It's it's madness. This stuff. So I and part of it is like as we decompose this i don't know if anyone else runs into this but it's kind of like sharing this as like specific tools for observation and and analysis and and troubleshooting of your own well many kinds and, and, and people are chiming into the chat and they're agreeing with you it's like it, it's it is a simple enough piece of advice but it's something that's so easy to overlook is just get one copy printed to test to test it out right to make sure that you got everything set up right and i, I even do this when i do print on demand jobs so like I, i've got uh the boulder and fleet sketchbook that i just released on my tiny astronaut store and we, you know i actually had that i want to say it was done like back in january maybe even earlier but i just did like a a print of like one or two just to be on the safe side then i ordered a batch that i could sell you know once i knew that it was set up properly so what nice. do you got here rob Okay, so I, for, I have the one not ready for duplexing, but notice though, because here's, so if we, I'm going to scroll down to the one ready for duplexing, and notice how it's actually, so you have the, the big pizzas on the cover, and then the little pizzas doing their jumpy happy thing, and then mm -hmm. and the same column, pizzas jumpy happy, but now they're rotated, right? Mm -hmm. The orientation is fixed. So the correct physical position, and that this is a madness thing too, because I easily get confused looking at my own comic when things are wonked with like, uh, is it is it is it orientation or is it now the page order? I in the phys, the, the how did <laughs> and debugging that is yeah it can be really um, an annoying puzzle, um, but then using both the algorithm and this this strategy for fixing if your rotation is wrong then hopefully you know this this can help other folks too so here we go um this is so the, the trick was is that all of the back sides of the physical pages this you know the, the the um the art on that side had to be rotated 180 degrees and so I, what's what's interesting is i had each physical page or each comic page was this was a separate image that I just was able to use as a property on. I selected them all in, on the you know the second um, the on the back side pages, and then just adjusted a property and boop they all rotated 180 degrees. Um, and I was using okay. So yeah, schedule. these weren't grouped. The 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 two side by side pages weren't grouped as a single image Correct. on the page. 
Yeah, because that would have been a pain in the butt. Because then you would have had to like actually like crop and you that know. That would be yes, extra challenge. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um. Right. Okay. So there, there you go. Um. And then this fixed it both both at home and when I when I did my test prints. And then by doing test prints, I was out. And another thing, I was able to do. Um. Hey, I'm curious about the colors of some their some cardstock. Right. I didn't want my, um, uh, my my comic to be all on. Either that both this I like my covers to be a little heavier weight of paper than the than the contents, and also um, you know maybe a little little something something either it's color but I, I'm not I didn't budget the time for this project to make a color cover and whatnot but um, but then I could make make the color cardstock and you know it's pretty cheap to just do a little bit of experimenting with that mm -hmm. like in my case this was like sixty six cents to do the whole the whole unit whole unit yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. That's that's actually pretty good, because um, you're also printing the cover black and white, which saves a lot of money, right? Because I know that, like in the case of like these, uh, um, when I do full color on cardstock, at least at the FedEx that I order my books through in town here, what do they wind up being? I think like thirty cents a cover. Uh, okay. You know, so. But still pretty and, good. Not bad. Not bad, but like you're also printing larger, so like you only get two. Co well, in this case, I'm only getting two covers per. No, you're getting one cover per sheet of paper, Correct. right? Yeah. yeah, and so I'm getting two covers per sheet of paper. So that it's another reason I like this little tiny format because uh, it's so darn. Not only is it pocketable, it's so darn affordable. You can make so many books for so little money. But uh, anyway, um. Have you done any different uh, prints in terms of like printing on cheaper or more expensive interior paper? Because I have noticed that when I print on mm -hmm. cheaper paper for my black and white interiors, um, it will break it into a lower definition line screen sometimes. So I'll lose some detail. Not that like I'm you know trying to win art awards with the interiors of my mini comics, but this is one where I had them do a laser print and they were able to get I can't. Ooh. A much higher definition. Um, you could get very some of the, these fine marker lines in the background that wouldn't show up normally. They're very, very faint. Yeah. So have you messed around with that yet? It's like a little bit of dry brushy effect, yeah. sort of. Yeah. Um, I yeah, I did a little bit of that too. I did um, I did one with uh, sort of the default uh, paper, and uh, yeah, and then one with a, a little like slightly upgraded interior paper and they're pretty similar um so you have like really crisp bold lines in your work though i'm, I'm not there isn't like a whole lot of like dry brush shading or anything like that yeah yours. not in this one it's it this is um definitely the uh lines without a lot of extra um yeah yeah brushy effects and whatnot but then and and i needed to in a way i like I, one of the reasons why i had to go uh the larger size where it's only you know, I essentially have half the amount of comic pages per physical piece of paper that that the your layout has, and I do like that because it's so much more economical. But like, I had I had a lot. There's a lot of panels, and then um, I wouldn't say it's overly verbose, but there's enough words and word balloons and the fonts and the the size of the font and the you know quality of the font and all that stuff. It's mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's it's helped by having a larger physical format to be more readable. This goes to something that uh, Troy Shadowing Tronics was saying in the chat earlier as he's working on a mini comic, uh, Captain Yuletides, uh, or Captain Yuletide, my Captain Yuletides is in the comics, are supposed to be mini, but the page count is closer to the page count of a regular comic, just with less panels per page and intended to be smaller. So yeah, um, I mean, that's something that you have to think about when you're thinking about uh, the setup for your gig or your 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 final product is that doing more than four panels per page at this size is just really, really hard. Um, it becomes, it can, it get, gets muddy really fast. Um, I'm thinking like, yeah, here's like one where it's like kind of four panels, right? We've got the ding, ding, first mm -hmm. panel, second panel, third panel. I said, no drops, fourth panel, the big swack guy getting hit, but, you know, I think as I'm looking at the comic, one, two, three, four, five. Here's a page with upwards of six panels, and you can see it starts getting really tight in there. 
Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, so. you're economic with, yeah, the, there's, it's like, there's a big setup, um, piece of dialogue, but then the rest of the dialogue is, is a lot more economic, but, but still it's, um, it's definitely a lot, a lot of, um, um, yeah, there's, there's, yeah, layout and legibility challenges that you run into of the, with the constraints of the smaller physical page size. Pretty natural thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and and what what's the print quality going to be? Is this going to be something that you could get a digest size? Like that that's what I remember calling your format for two pizza mm-hmm. teams digest size. You get that done through a print on demand printer on all glossy paper, which means you're going to have a lot more definition. So you could get even more detailed and even crisper size. I I now I'm curious what it would look like to get one of these done through a print on demand printer like Kablam. Hmm. I don't know. I uh, Better be pretty cool. There's one way to find out. Yeah. Hey, blam.com. I'm gonna head there today. Um, <laughs> hey, Jersey, where are you going? I'm going. To- <laughs> <laughs> Can't talk now, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> As I tuck on my hat. Um, all right. Well, I, I, it feels like we're heading for final thought. Do you want to do right. that? Yeah. This is a this perfect time. And you know, there's that whole thing about taking advantage of this, of the, of this format and, and, and being able to be more strategic about your design choices. And what does that look like? Yeah. 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 And it, it's, I'll, I'll front end this with a little bit of a warning. It's going to get a little mathy and it might potentially sound like using math constraints to inform storytelling, which I would actually counter argue, well, that's what cartoonists and storytellers do is we work with constraints to come up with creative solutions. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Mm. Um, but be- before we do that, we got to thank a couple more people who make this show possible. Those people happen to be, guess who, Rob? I bet you know who they are. Is it, wait, wait, you and me. <laughs> that's right. It's me and you. Okay. We make stuff and then we, we take these experiences of making things and turn them into this show. Um, and I mentioned at the top of this episode that I'm a cartoonist and teaching artist. And the thing I would like you to check out today is Science Comics Rockets, a Graphic novel comes out June 12th from first second. Um, uh, what is it? A, an imprint of Macmillan. And uh, it is a nonfiction, it's not a graphic novel, it's a nonfiction comics documentary about the history and science of rockets as told by grumpy animals. Why? Because a whole bunch of animals are involved and tied to rocket history. So uh, one of the stories you'll find in there is the story of Claude Ruggieri, Italian rocket maker, who was just trying to make really cool fireworks and wanted to advertise his expertise to people. And he wanted to do a big uh, special, um, uh, what would you call it? Like a, a, a spectacular... Like a press-worthy event? Yes, a press-worthy, thank you. And so he's like, I got this rocket that's so big and so powerful, can launch a kid. And the police came up and they're like, uh-uh, you know, you're not launching kids. He's like, okay, well, what else can I do that will capture a lot of attention? So he filled it with rats. And he's like, okay, I'm going to launch all these rats up in the sky. But, you know, Ah. people will just be horrified if a bunch of rats fall on him. So I'll give him little parachutes. And he put parachutes on all the rats. And so they launched up at the sky and came down gently with parachutes. And that story is in there with a whole bunch of other (laughs) stories of uh, how rockets work, who made uh, some significant, uh, you know, discoveries in the field of rocketry and how animals were involved. We also tell the story of Mary Sherman Morgan, who with chemistry saved the space race. You know, we, we, uh, we had a lot of trouble getting our first rockets into outer space and it was a chemical problem as solved by uh, calculator Mary Sherman Morgan. Uh, so you can find it, it's on Amazon for pre-order now. It is uh, also in Diamond, if you get your comics through uh, comic stores. You can pre-order it now in Diamond, the Diamond catalog. Go to your favorite ca- favorite comic retailer. Also go to Indie Bound if you want to get it from a local retailer. And then uh, stay tuned because there's going to be a bunch of appearances and signings and stuff in the weeks to come. So, Rob, you make a game. <gasps> Should we talk yeah. about this game? Shall I play this game while we talk about the game? I'd, well, that'd be, that would be lovely if you have it available. Um, uh, well, I bought it, so well, I can I- play it. Thank you for buying it. it. I, I do really appreciate your support. And, and honestly, it, it, that's awesome. And it's okay. So, uh, all right. Uh, Jersey's a, a, a comic artist, a teaching artist and all that. And well, I'm a user experience and game designer. And the, the I tend to get games out into the world from time to time. And, and well, this panda needs you is it, it's a fun one. That's really for all ages that um, it's all about uh 
pattern matching and dealing with some some basic physics of like how do these blocks stack and fit together and and um, how does that work and it starts out really easy um, you know the a little cute panda encounters a stack of blocks and a cloud comes down knocks them all over and, and well it's your job to help you know that little panda put things back together the panda helps encourage you encourages you along the way because uh, well, the game can tell if you're if you're making progress and 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 getting stuff to match where you know what it needs to match, and so the panda's celebrating when you're when you're moving along there, and the music amps up and all this stuff. And there's a whole lot of puzzles in there. There's like over 50 levels. They, they get progressively harder, but not too frustrating. Um, but definitely a lot more things to deal with when you got a lot more shapes and a lot more different complex stacks to deal with. Um, and you can find out how, where that goes if you go if you um, you can learn about it at this-panda.com or, of course, go to your um, favorite app store, whether that's uh, iOS or Android. So go to, go to Google Play if you, um, you're, uh, you've got a uh, tablet or Google phone um, on running Android. Uh, then if you have a desktop operating system you'd rather play this on, it works great on Windows tablets. Um, it it's, it's especially excels at touch UI, but works well with the mouse too. So you can get it for uh, Mac OS or Windows at... Um, itch.io and just search for this panda needs you and if you do purchase it please give it consider giving it a review a positive review that helps more people find the game as well uh let's say that you are here because you like the way we think about things more than you know it's nice that we make stuff but you really like the show more than anything else well fair enough this show is a product that we make and we have more products like them at leanintoart.com workshops where you will find self-contained video presentations based upon real classroom uh, in-person workshops we have led in the past. You can download them at a price of your choosing, even free. You can just download it for free and see if it's any good. And if you do get value out of it, a great thing you could do is go back and then purchase it. It's like giving us a tip. You can get it as a gift for a friend. Say, hey, I got a lot out of this comics or game workshop. Uh, here, here it is for you because I'm that good of a friend. Uh, if you are listening to the show on a podcast, catcher some kind of like what however you listen to podcasts giving us a star review five star review helps more people find the show if you're watching the video on youtube right now giving it a thumbs up helps more people find the show as well and we thank everybody who's been doing those things it means a lot to us mm -hmm. thank you all right time for final thought um has your thinking changed about structuring your stories based on these kind of page constraints well let's see it well because i honestly i think of every page as this as a, as a a structure of um posing and answering questions and i like the whole um like i share this kind of rationale in the um in a workshop called um uh writing and drawing comics the dramatic reveal and it um it's essentially you know the answering and, and playing with expectations and opening up opening up questions where there's always some kind of question in the end right and that leading to well what's next and then continuing continuing on um and i mean that's just a loose thing i consider as, as so like each page is like a link in the chain of these kind of you know ex, uh, encouraging exploration and curiosity but then uh there's this extra reward that i don't often think of and i didn't this time with with two pizza team is that the the this the, the center the the middle fold of a of of the comic can be <clears throat> because of its unique situation of, of ha having the ability to position a lot more art next to each other it, you can do neat things with it i totally didn't take advantage of that this time <laughs> and i thought about it as i was doing my imposition mapping and i went oh <laughs> there's nothing extra oomphing amplifying rewarding what have you it's just the re the same approach i had the rest of the story let me um, see if i can get to the cat and cat pdf because i did do that with um the Captain Cat story. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, let me zoom out and I will do a screen share. Um, I mean, because I was making my own mini comics uh, very early on, I learned about this like center of the of the saddle stitch, as they call it, reveal. Um, mm. 
a long time ago and saw it as a potential storytelling tool, but I don't use it that often. But in the case of Cat and Cat, I knew what pages were going to fall in the dead center of the book. And when you're printing mini comics with a photocopier, it's you can't, um, how do I put it? You can't print to the edge of the page unless you're going to trim the book down afterwards, right? Um, so a lot of the art is designed to not bleed off the page, like this page we're looking at right here, where there's clear margins on the page, right? Mm -hmm. And those margins extend to the center of the page because you don't, if it, if anything misaligns, if you want like something to bleed from like say page two to page three, you're really cutting that page in half and then hoping that it, you've lined it up carefully so that when you staple the book together that art will match but when you have the center spread you have a unique opportunity there's the center spread of the captain cat mini comic right <laughs> yeah that's an Which, awesome one by the way if you shark, think this is yep. if you think this is cool art don't don't they get any anybody who signs up for our patreon don't they get a captain cat pdf as, as yeah part i believe of thank so you? this is yeah ah, this is there we go perfect th perfect time to talk about it um but yeah so here was an opportunity where it's like well i don't have to worry about lining up the art because it's falling right in the center spread of the book. So the story was like when Anne and I were working out the outline, we said, okay, well, we know that this moment has to happen in the center. So that affects the beginning and the end of the book, right? Um, it does, it, totally. Because now you're, the, the rhythm that you may have, have outlined can, uh, right, something that may need to get nudged either further, further up or further back. So to share one more thing about how this affects my work is when I'm actually outlining, and this is an outline to uh, a book I did a couple years ago. Um, I actually will do this. I'll work out these um, sort of paragraph descriptions of how my stories are going to go, mm -hmm. and it'll, I'll just be listing essential actions. This is from the Captain Seriously eighth grade book that I did. You know, Act Act One, ten pages. So I'll work out like what are the big chunks of story going to be? Okay, ten pages for this, fifteen pages for Act Two. Uh, knowing that I've got 40 pages in all, right? And I just do a, like a guess. Okay, Act 3 will probably be around 15 pages, right? Uh, and that gives me my 40 pages. And then I start breaking it down into smaller chunks. So Act 1A, three pages. Here's essentially what I have to cover in this. Act 1B, five pages. Act 1C, two pages. And this becomes a sort of a bank of pages that I can add or pull from to get my dun 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 moment to fall on that center spread of the book so like in the ninth grade book which we, i think we talked about a little bit when jesse coffin was on the show a while back um we had a fairly um intense thing happen in the book um if, especially for kids who have been growing up with the series since second grade and it's like i knew that that needed to be right like when the book cracks open um I think I have a copy nearby, but like when you saddle stitch a book, like it naturally opens to the center spread. So like, mm -hmm. that's where a lot of kids are going to be opening it to. So I need to have this thing there that like, when they see it, they say, no way that doesn't happen in this. So now they're gonna go back and read it, you know, like try to use, you got the cover as a way to entice the reader, but you also have that center spread as a way to entice the reader. It's the same thing with the captain cat book. Um, when I take it to conventions, I'll have the cover out and they'll be like, oh, cute cat with a sailor hat. And then I'll have it opened too. And they'll be like, what shark? Are you kidding me? You know? So um, I do think about that, especially with my saddle stitch books. When you're talking about a perfect bound book, um, there's an opportunity for me to talk about Nightmare Pro Wrestling, which I'm drawing right now, which mm -hmm. actually has a Kickstarter. Uh, you can support it and get a print copy of this book about wrestling monsters. But when you're talk when you're doing, um, you know, perfect bound, it doesn't do that as much, right? True, it true. doesn't naturally open to that. So it's less of a concern when you're dealing with like huge page counts that you're going to do perfect binding with. But with saddle stitching, it tends to, which with saddle stitch is just stapled, you know, it tends to open to the middle. So hmm. I do think about that a lot. And I do change scenes in order to achieve, not like I said, not every time, but a lot of time I do think about that. And, and I have to admit that this is this is something that's become an aspiration for me, but I haven't taken advantage of it yet. It's uh, it was one of those things where I got far enough along in the project, and I went, yeah, that would have been nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not something that's top of mind for me all the time, you know. It's just that it's 
it, it is now at this point it's baked into my thinking process but it's something where it's like oh yeah i should have thought about that earlier on but now it's too late i'm committed to this part of it but in cases where it's like okay i know that this thing that happens in the middle is like the like it's the how do i describe it I keep thinking of this Tom Cito quote. Tom Cito is this uh, animation director and storyboard artist who years ago I talked with on the Art and Story podcast. And I remember he said, uh, when you think of the book Moby Dick, you don't think, call me Ishmael. One day when I was feeling so-and-so, I went down to the sea. He's like, you, you think of, you, you picture in your mind that scene of Captain Ahab stabbing the heck out of that whale. Um, and he said, like, like the stories have like this visual sort of like this 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 image that is conjured when you evoke the name of that story. And I think about when when I'm working on my books, like, what is that image of this particular comic, right? Hmm. Um, and that if 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 it's the right moment, it, it I should try to find a way for it to be somewhere in that center spread. Captain Cat, former shark hunter, the world of sharks have sworn revenge on this cat. What's the image that comes to mind? Oh cat being assailed by sharks in the ocean right there's your center spread um like i said, like I, said I don't do that with every, every time but yeah well i mean it's i i think you've i mean you've laid out this, this sort of uh, pr really strong rationale where i think it's it's very tempting to try to incorporate that as a design constraint um mm -hmm. i mean you you had it's it's like partial part of the enticing is in and uh for both both it, um the curiosity of someone who's already planning on picking it up where they're like, wait a minute, you know, how does this, how does this middle thing come, come about? But then it's also got a marketing job where someone who mm -hmm. like maybe isn't going to pick it up yet. And they're like, wait, you know, like, again, you got the juxtaposition of the cover promise versus this middle and that's yeah. powerful. And then it, it's the it reward can be. Is of the page turn, right? It is a big yeah, those... different kind of page turn than the regular page turn. Well, it's it's the it's the next time on Beast Wars, you know, and then like they show like three things that are gonna potentially happen, um, and I, I man, that stuff worked like magic on me when Beast Wars was on the air. Uh, and speaking of which, Shadowing is in the chat. It says so you don't just plan the layout to encourage turning to the next page, but where the center is to get it to open and be a teaser. Yes, both. Right, you hopefully design the pages so that it encourages turning. So you don't end it in an awkward way or you don't end it with too much stuff moving back into the page. Or if you do that, you do it for effect, right? Like uh, I think the episode that I did with Dan Mishkin of the Lean Into Art cast where he had uh, a Will Eisner page that did exactly that, but it was a disturbing moment. And so it like went in, well, I should be doing it to your orientation, moving into the uh, center binding of the book rather than out to the, to the page turn. But ideally you're thinking of all those things, but you know, ideally you're doing it intuitively. Like, just like when you ride a bike, you don't go, okay, now's the part when I move my left foot. Now's the part when I move my right foot. Now's the part when I fi fix my balance with the handlebars. You don't do that. You just like, it just all happens because you practice all those individual parts over and over again. I would say that it's, it's, I, it's almost like I'm figuring out the, how to ride my bike a little better because mm -hmm. I noticed that I could have done something that I probably, I, with this story, I could have easily taken advantage of. I could have easily nudged a moment forward or back and, and made and made that rewarding that that page turn. So it's kind of like um, well, getting the vocab to then be aware. It's like it's a tool. It has this potential. And then noticing if it's there, noticing if it's not creates this progression where you're like, OK, oh, for sure. Next time. So, yes, I'll look forward to seeing this effect in two pizza team and the 12 deadly toppings. Next volume, volume in the series. <laughs> okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. <laughs> no pressure. Which is another thing is like people just really respond to like if you say like in you know in in the nine deadly campsites you know uh, Indiana Jones and and the fifteen deadly blades of grass you know, it's like what why are they why are there fifteen of them and not twenty and not a million you know like it just constrains it a little bit and excites the imagination. Yep. Oh. And opening up, inviting the questions. Come on in. Yep. Come on down, you y'all. Something interesting in here. So that's <laughs> that's super fun stuff. Um, uh, this was uh, this was really handy, Jersey. I appreciated uh, going through this with you. Oh, thank you for putting together the algorithm and in you know in inspiring this topic. It, 
I was just so thrilled that we found yet another way to talk about mini comics. <laughs> We're like, we have like a serious series now on mini comics, just as, as it happens. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. Okay. As it happens, but we should box those up somehow. Hmm. Um, or revisit them as a series, like a proper series, right? Like the, the criterion collection where we remaster our discussions on mini comics. Um, who knows? All right. Well, but in, in any case, we did a podcast this week, and here we are again. And thank you, Rob. Um, thanks, everybody, for downloading, watching, and listening. We do the show every Thursday night at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, 9 p.m. Central, unless we do a rebroadcast, which we do from time to time. But when we do that, we pull out something really, really good from the archives. And with 231 episodes in the can, um, we have statistics on our side or statistics probability on our side that we have something good in the archives and uh, they're kind of buried you you have to go out of your way to to dig in you'd have to go to the website because they don't appear in the the um, rss feed anymore that's right, right. they they that's roll right. off after 100 because of where we're hosting rats so mm. actually hey it's not a bug it's a feature all right and uh <laughs> We, 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 the show is broadcast live on YouTube at leanintoart.com slash live, and then it is archived as a podcast at patreon.com slash leanintoart. More uh, social media stuff is coming up in a second, but until next time, I have been Jersey Drozd of leanintoart.com and Jersey Drozd on Instagram. And I've been Rob Stenzinger of leanintoart.com and also Rob Stenzinger on Instagram. Oh, yeah, and this is the part where I say, um, how about I say, okay, bye. And I turn up the music for the final outro credit. How about I give this one more try, everybody? Here we go. Ready? Okay, bye. Show notes for this episode can be found at leanintoarts.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at the user lean into art and you can reach us via email at lean into art at gmail.com and remember leaners aren't wieners thanks for listening all right i'm turning off the stream thanks everybody thank you